And this is why when your friends are sad or hurt, you shouldn't comfort them. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jesse Lyon, a licensed counselor who gives you the psychology behind pop culture. And a little shout out here to Julie over on the Discord server for sending me this video about why you shouldn't comfort people because of this weird psychology hack. If you're interested in this kind of content and wanna help grow mental health awareness for people who could really use it, do me a favor, do your part, hit subscribe down below. Now, over to the video. By the way, if you wanna chat with me throughout the week and join the Discord server, just visit lionmentalhealth.com. The link is at the bottom of my weekly emails. But this person is talking about how comforting someone is actually the worst thing that you could do. And I'm gonna give my opinion on it. If you wanna help a loved one through anxiety, comforting them is the worst thing you can do. In this post, I'll reveal number one, why comforting them is the worst thing you can do, and number two, how you can better help them instead. First, the Tall, tall order, buddy, but let's see, let's see how you do. Let's see, I'm, 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 I'm settling in. Human brain is designed to move away from pain at all costs and towards comfort and pleasure. That's conditioning one of- Away from pain and toward pleasure. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that checks out. I, I would do a little caveat, right? Ba Listen, we're nitpicking because it's a YouTube video. We've got the time to do this. This is a TikTok viral post, right? So- it's actually a smaller post, to be honest, but this person's trying to make a viral post here, so they don't have the time to explain. The brain actually moves towards power. Anything that gives us a sense of power and control is at least the way that I understand psychology. Yes, comfort, um, but if you think about it, comfort means I have abundance. I have wealth, I have power, I have control, I have safety over my environment. So I do think that sometimes we misunderstand like what the brain moves towards, because think about it. If I'm really, really depressed and start engaging in some self-harm behaviors, I'm not moving away from pain, I'm actually moving toward pain but I move toward self-harm because it gives me a sense of power and control over a depressing and hopeless situation. So the primary drive and motivation of a human being, and this is hotly contested, uh, you know, Sigmund Freud believed it was a will to survive, but you know, Friedrich Nietzsche and some others after him said, no, 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 it's a will to power. And this is where I side with the philosophers on this one, but it can often confuse my clients. And so I have to several times have some conversations about how your brain doesn't actually crave comfort, it craves power and control. And that's a good thing, you want that. Uh, the brain will embrace and endure painful situations if it is agreed upon that at the end of that, you will get more power and control. It's the same reason people go to the gym, right? I go to the gym and it hurts, but after I'm done, I'm healthier, have more power, more control, more ability in my life. So a little nitpick there, but generally okay sure so let's let's get back to it one-on-one -on -one, right whatever gets rewarded gets repeated so comforting them while they're in their anxious state creates a neural connection that says anxiety equals comfort and they'll keep doing it unconsciously to, to be honest i strongly disagree i mean <laughs> uh, i am i am creating a bit of a fallacy here of saying does that mean that the opposite is then true. When someone is anxious, I should slap them because it's like, stop being anxious. This is not helpful for you. Pain, 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 pain. No, but I do understand that what he's about to say next is a more effective strategy. Two, what to do instead is grab their attention and direct their focus to something that makes them feel okay just for the moment. As their focus is over here and they're feeling that way, then you can give them all the comfort and reassurance that they need, and that will be reinforced. You know, the more that I listen to this video, the more that I absolutely disagree with him. What he's talking about is actually one of the principles of hypnotherapy, but it's the way that he's talking about it is actually executed poorly. So in hypnosis, when I want to hypnotize somebody, and I do this very often as a trauma therapist, my goal is to grab their attention, right? I even, I even used his same gestures. I want to grab their attention, and then I want to direct them toward a more positive outcome. What he's talking about is distraction. I don't want to distract. The brain's natural trauma response is to kind of dissociate, and that is not helpful. What I do want to do is I want to integrate that traumatic experience or that anxiety experience into a cohesive story because the brain becomes fractured. And when we experience anxiety, trauma, depression, all of these things, we start to separate out and we lose our synchronicity. We lose our connectivity inside of the brain. And so what I want to do is say, hey, contextualize this. Listen, buddy, come here, focus. I've got you. You're safe. We're okay, let's figure out what's going on here. You are experiencing this. Focus on your goal. Yes, you've just fell down and skinned your knee, but you're trying to ride your bike. 
right? Let's focus on riding the bike. Let's get back up on two wheels. Skinning the knee is all part of the process. I want to incorporate their painful experience into their story, not just distract them because that can actually create these little bubbles of isolated trauma that are not integrated into their cohesive life story. So yes, I don't just want to coddle them because that can create kind of a dependence and even suggest to them that they're not strong enough to get out of their pain and difficult situations. So I don't want to coddle. I don't want to sympathize. I want to empathize and redirect. This is a part of your story. This is going to be okay. It's not good that it happened to you. I'm not saying it doesn't hurt, but you're going to get through this and we're going to figure it out together. That's what I want to do. I want to reconnect with them and show them I'm not leaving you. You belong. You are valuable. You are here. We're going to figure this out together. That's what I want to do. And it is much more of a helpful strategy than sympathy is, which I think is the point that he's trying to get to, that you don't want to sympathize with somebody and just kind of coddle them because that can create sort of a forced dependence. And even in a borderline type of presentation or situation, it can create a person who continues to engage in a histrionic kind of problematic. They're always creating these situations and self-sabotaging themselves because that's the only way they know how to fit in. We don't want to do that. Um, but I don't think I agree with the video as a whole, to be honest. Problems are the biggest addiction in the world, such as anxiety, because you and I unconsciously reinforce our loved one's behavior for their negative emotions. Drop the word comfort down in the comments and follow me for more if this made sense. Didn't make sense to me, but hey, if you want to check it out yourself, this person's name is the Tyler Charles boys. So, hey, check it out. Smaller channel. Listen, no disrespect. I think they're bringing up an engaging and very important topic. I just don't totally agree with the way that they would handle it. I think if somebody is in a bad situation, again, I want to connect. I want to redirect and I want to integrate that story, not just distract. Comfort is great. Of course, we need to be comforted because and this is the point of the whole video. When you're comforting somebody, I don't want to sympathize and say, oh, poor baby. I want to remind them you are valuable. You belong. You have a place in my heart and in my relationships, and we're going to get through this together. You are not alone. That's the key. You agree? You disagree? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.